you already know the AI revolution is here, right? Like if you're if you're not using it, you're going to get left behind in business. But most people are underutilizing AI, so busy using it to write social media posts and newsletters for them that they're missing other places to leverage AI in their business, specifically on sales, sales calls, sales coaching, sales training, sales playbooks, sales objections. And I'm going to show you how you can leverage AI to make yourself a sales expert, even if you don't have a lot of experience in sales at all. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up? I'm Ray Green, former executive turned nomad entrepreneur. I was the managing director of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for over a decade. So I oversaw the direct sales and phone sales and field sales and digital sales, you name it. I led a turnaround for private equity groups as a CEO. The sales teams that I built have sold more than a quarter of a billion dollars, and I've turned around eight sales teams in my career. So you could say I've seen a sales process or two. Now I'm using AI to do what I've always done, but do it exponentially faster and do it better than I've ever done it. You as a business owner don't need that 15 years of sales management experience to really maximize the use of AI in your sales process with your sales team or your salesperson. So if you're only using it to create content for you, you are leaving a lot of money on the table. And what I'm gonna do is walk you through how I'm using it to research clients, write sales playbooks, write objection handling playbooks, and even coach salespeople using AI. Okay, now the first thing you wanna do is make sure you're recording all of your sales calls. So go to your Zoom, your Teams, your Hangouts, whatever it is, get the setting to make sure that every call is always recorded. What I want you to do is go get the 10 best sales calls that you can find. Go to the people that you've gotten the best results from, the best results with, the testimonials from, go back and grab those calls and then drop them in a tool like Descript. I'll put a link to Descript in the notes. Now, Descript is not just gonna transcribe it. What it's gonna actually allow you to do is edit out all the junk in those calls. But it also lets me edit the video by just editing the text. So it transcribes it. And then the parts of the transcription that I delete, it deletes that from the video. Okay, so I'm editing video by editing text. So if you can copy and paste, you can edit video, right? So you drop these 10 calls in, you get the transcriptions, and then just go through and cut out all the junk. Then take those transcripts and put them into one document, put them into like one Google Doc or one Microsoft Word Doc. And so now you've got them on one linear thing and just label them, call one, call two, call three through call 10. Take that extra long transcription and plug it into the AI tool of your choice. I use GPT, it works plenty fine for me, but there's Gemini, there's Claude, there's a million others. Use a prompt like this, and I'll put a link to these prompts in the notes as well. We are a, and then just put in what you are. So I would put in, we are a B2B sales and management consulting business. A perfect client for us tends to be, and I would put in you know, a, a US-based MSP or IT business with revenue between one and 20 million in revenue. We help them, and just the core transformation of, of what you help them do. So I would say we help them create and improve their sales process and playbooks, build and optimize sales teams, and create a scalable sales organization based on processes and systems. Okay, one sentence, one liner, what do you do? And then the rest of the prompt is this. Below are the transcriptions of 10 sales calls from clients we consider to be a perfect fit for us. These are the types of clients we get the best and fastest results with. Please analyze these calls as a high-performing 20-year sales and marketing veteran in our industry. Look for patterns in how they describe their problems and their pains, challenges they are facing, concerns they have about buying from us, and any other relevant insights that may help us better understand our ideal clients and customers. Please share any patterns and insights you see based on this analysis that may help us understand our ideal client more, and improve our sales and marketing messaging, positioning, and results. Now you can obviously change this. You can obviously tweak it, you know, extend it, like do whatever you want. You can add more detail. But what this is gonna do is it's going to draw on the vast knowledge that is AI. What can we glean from this, right? Like what can we extract from these calls about our ideal client? So now you are using your sales calls as research and development. And if you do this, your sales calls will be a gold mine, a wealth of information that you can use in your marketing and your sales process so that you can better understand who your ideal client is, but also how they're talking, what their challenges are, and what your messaging and positioning needs to be to really land. So now you've got research. Now you have some like really good information that you can use in your sales and marketing. I wanna use that process, like everything that's in that transcript, to create a sales playbook. And you can do this even if you've never written a sales playbook before. If there's any outliers, like I'm assuming that these calls were, were run well, like they, they were closed deals, and they were with people that you wanted to sell. So I'm assuming that these calls were run well. If they weren't run well, then just delete any outliers, all right, and leave the ones that are, that are pretty good calls in there, okay? And then use this prompt. The process and scripting in these sales calls generally reflect the best practices of our sales team. 
Please review all of these sales calls carefully through the lens of a 20-year sales management veteran in our industry and create a sales playbook we can use for sales coaching and training. The playbook should include a process that you've extracted by reviewing these calls and identifying consistent patterns and how the calls were run. The objective is to create a repeatable process we can train everyone to use and get optimal results from. Please include key sections like, but certainly not limited to, introduction, discovery, closing, and objection handling, and include the core scripting, questions, presentation material, and other information that's consistently used across these calls. Use your sales management and industry knowledge and experience to fill in any gaps with the playbook that you can't directly extract from the calls themselves. What it's going to do is it's going to take all the data that's there and all the data that it knows, and it's going to give you a playbook that I assure you is going to be at least 50% of the way there, if not 75, 80% of the way there. One of the biggest challenges in sales tends to be overcoming objections. So build yourself an objection handling playbook. Here's how you do that. You take that same conversation you're having and you enter a prompt like this. Based on your analysis of these calls and your 20 years of high performance sales management in the I would say consulting industry, where you've listened to thousands of sales calls, identify the five most common sales objections we can expect on future sales calls. Please also create two rebuttals for each of these objections we can include in our playbook. The rebuttal should be empathetic and include a question. They should not be combative, confrontational, or make the prospect feel defensive, and they should leverage all the sales training, books, and practices you've learned in 20 years, specifically from practices taught by, and then pick your favorite sales trainer. Now, you can pick the Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. You can pick, you know, Sandler from Sandler System. You can pick Alex Ormosi. You could pick Ray Green. It's now going to tell you what the most common objections are most likely to be. And frankly, I've coached, I've consulted, I've I've worked in a variety of industries. There's almost always five. And if your salespeople or you are armed with how to address those, you can 80-20 that, right? That is going to be 80% of the work that you are going to get from nailing down these five. So now you've got five of the most common objections and you've got a couple of responses that you can use when those come up, all right? So you, there's no reason to get caught flat-footed when those objections come up in the future. The best way to handle every sales objection, every single one in sales is to do it proactively. Like the worst time to handle a sales objection is when it's come up at the end of the call when you're talking about money, okay? Because they know you want the money at that point. So the best way to handle objections is to get ahead of them. So if you wanna do that proactively, you can do it in your marketing and you can do it in your sales. You take that conversation with AI and you ask it to help you think of ways and ideas and content that you can use in your marketing before the sales call even happens. So I have a podcast where I do this, okay? So one of the objections that one of my sales guys was getting was, hey, I've gotta actually go get more sales. I gotta get more clients before I can sign up for this program, okay? So I sat down, I recorded a podcast called Stop Spinning Your Wheels. And the gist of it was, if you're driving on the beach and your truck gets stuck, the amateur, the person that doesn't know what they're doing is gonna step on the gas. Okay. The person that knows what they're doing is going to use these other tactics and other methods that help get the car unstuck a hell of a lot faster. But the inexperienced person is just going to step on the gas. They're going to keep doing the wrong thing more, faster, harder, and it's not going to get them results. In fact, it might make things worse. That's why you need help to actually know the right thing to do so that you can get unstuck faster. So there was a metaphor in there. Right. So I was using that as content that salespeople in our marketing could use to get ahead of the objection that I've got to go get more clients before I can sign up for a program or consulting or services to help me get clients. So you can do the exact same thing. And I'll show you how. Based on your analysis of the sales calls and the objection handling playbook, please provide 10 unique ideas for social media posts we can create and publish that allow us to proactively address these objections. The goal of the social media post would be to address the core issue in the prospect's mind with a piece of content that, if read, would lead the prospect to no longer have that objection. You do not need to write the full post. I would only like the angle or the idea for now. Please use this as an example for the strategy, but not the content unless it's relevant to our ideal client and objection handling playbook. And I put the link to my article and podcast in there. So I'm having it use that as context for the objection. So I say, in this post, the author uses this piece of content and the metaphor of getting the car stuck in the sand to address the objection of, I need to get some clients before I invest in learning how to build a client acquisition system. Please provide 10 creative ways we can do the same thing with our top objections. Okay, so you're asking AI to help think for you. You're asking AI to help be creative. You're asking it to take the objections and then use this example and say, 
how can we do the same thing? How can we create some content that's gonna get ahead of these objections before they ever come up on the sales call? That is by far the best way to handle objections. So you can use that prompt, use that example and say, give me some ideas, like help me be creative here and think about it. And then at that point, if you wanna write the post or ask it to write more content around it, you certainly can. Now, the other way that you can get ahead of sales objections is on the sales call itself, okay? So you can ask AI at this point, like it's got a lot of information, it knows who your ideal client is, it's got the playbook, it's got the objections, it's been created for you and use the sales playbook and the objection handling playbook that it's created for you, okay? And ask it to do this. Please review the attached sales and objection handling playbooks, again, through the lens of an exceptional sales manager and sales strategist with over 20 years of experience. Carefully consider how we can proactively address these objections earlier in the sales call before they come up. For example, in discovery questions, we could ask prospects what makes this an issue that they need to address right now and not six months from now in order to address the objection of just not the right time right now. Please provide 10 to 15 creative and unique ways we can do this with objections in the attached playbooks. Okay, so now it's gonna give you some advice, it's gonna give you some suggestions and ideas on how you can take the sales playbook that you've created and get creative. These objections that you helped me identify, how can I plug these back into the playbook and get ahead of those objections and incorporate it into my process? So you've now had it create the playbook, create the objections, create the objection playbook, and you're feeding that back in to then say, how can I adjust the playbook based on the research that we've done, based on the conversation that we've had? Now, last and not least, and this is super fun, what you can do going forward to make yourself a sales manager is on recorded calls, grab the transcript, okay? Grab the transcript and grab the playbook and simply paste both of those in there and ask the AI tool of your choice to coach as if it was a world-class 20-year coach on how well the salesperson adhered to the sales playbook and if there were any missed opportunities any suggestions, any improvements that it would make based on the playbook that you have, okay? So you can actually use AI to start helping you coach the calls to the playbook based on the playbook that you asked AI to help you create, all right? Now, this is all stuff that I did intuitively. As a 15-year sales executive, these are all things that I've done. Now what I'm doing is I'm just systematizing it. I'm just doing it a hell of a lot faster. And then I'm refining and editing what's coming out of AI and I'm perfecting it and optimizing it. If you 80-20 this, you can get a hell of a lot further than where you are. You can get your process and you can get your playbook, you can get your objections, you can get some quality assurance going in there and you can have AI help you close more deals. So these are just a handful of ways I'm currently using it. I'm sure it's gonna to continue to evolve. I'm sure that in a year, we're gonna look back at this and go, man, we are way ahead of where we were. But if nothing else, I hope that this has opened your mind around the other ways to use AI, specifically in sales and sales management, above and beyond all the content creation, above and beyond all the other stuff that everybody is using it for today. One way to stay ahead of the game. Hope it helps. If it has, subscribe to the channel for more tips on business and sales. Adios.